Hi, let's talk about GladiaBots. Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome to my channel where I like to talk about games and game design. And today, I want to talk to you about a game that lets you design your own AI to go up in competition against AIs designed by other people. Uh, this game, uh, it's called GladiaBots, and it came out in 2019. And to me, it feels very much like a combination of a strategy game and like a spectator sport, uh, because you're setting up the strategy for your team, you're planning it, you're trying to think of any counters that uh, the other team may have to your strategy, uh, and then of course you're trying to debug and make sure it all works properly. Uh, but then when you hit go, you just have to sit back and watch your bots battle it out with another team. And for me, I love this. It's been a great way for me to get my fix of like designing behaviors without having to build a full game around it. So this game, uh, it does have single player and multiplayer uh, modes for you to play in. Uh, and the pretty decent tutorial for how to get started, uh, as well as some basic behaviors that you can use to build off of. And for me, the single player is a very good way of slowly, incrementally making your AI more and more complex uh, until you feel confident to hop onto the multiplayer. Uh, and the multiplayer in this is great because it's asynchronous, so you don't actually have to be online for your bots to compete, which is very good for a smaller game like this. Being able to find good competition for you pretty much no matter your skill level or the time of day that you have available to play uh, is, I think, a good, great decision on the part of the developer here. Now the slight downside of it being an asynchronous multiplayer is that uh, single player and multiplayer don't really feel uh, terribly different um, in terms of what you're doing or how it feels. Uh, and for me this has been very helpful because I do suffer from um, a little bit of like online anxiety or like competitive anxiety when playing with other people. So uh, it not feeling much different at all from the single player version of the game uh, definitely helps me to overcome that. I'm not sure if this will transfer to other games, but for now it's been nice not really feeling that sense of dread hitting the play match button. So there are three different game modes in GladiaBots. Uh, there is Collection, Domination, and Elimination. Um, and they all have very different uh, goals that you're trying to accomplish. And because they have such different goals, it's a great way to push you to optimize your AI design for each of those different competition styles. So Collection has you sending a team of four bots out to try and collect resources around the map. Uh, and whoever collects the most resources uh, within a time limit is the winner. Domination has you sending out your bots to control certain points around the map. And as you control these points, they will start to score points over time. It's a lot of points in that sentence. And now these two, Collection and Domination, uh, your bots will respawn if they get destroyed after a certain amount of time. Uh, however, in the final mode, in Elimination, your bots don't respawn. You have a team of eight going against a team of eight, and the goal is to be the last one standing or have the most bots remaining at the end. Now there is going to be some overlap in terms of like bot design as you're playing through these modes because there's just some strategies or some things that are generally good like uh, programming it so your bots run away so they don't die or figuring out how to do an uh, intelligent form of focus fire is also pretty good to eliminate any threats coming at you. But the extent to which the, you prioritize these will definitely depend uh, because in elimination it's extremely important to stay alive because if you can get numerical advantage then you're more likely to win. However, in the other modes, in Collection and Domination, because your bots respawn, uh, self-preservation isn't quite as important, and instead you may want to prioritize holding the objective or collecting the resource. Um, and it's just this push and pull, this uh, different gameplay that I find very interesting in terms of uh, kind of resetting my, my thought patterns in terms of designing the AI. So that brings us to the question of how do you program your AI in GladiaBots? It uses a visual programming style uh, that reminds me very much of um, the behavior tree style of uh, computer decision making um, that is uh, currently used in or is very popular in a lot of AAA games. Uh, and it's, it's popular because it's 
quite flexible and it's at least more importantly for me human readable which means that there's less chance of uh, errors creeping into the system as you're programming it. So because it's a visual programming style no actual coding knowledge is needed however um, and I don't know that there's a way around this in this type of game you still do need to be able to think like a programmer in order to uh, get the the bots to do what you want them to do. Uh, if you're having trouble with this, there are a couple of quick tips that I have for it uh, that maybe will help you out. Uh, one is to remember that computers aren't people. People, we have a very good ability to think and analyze the instructions are given to us and then we can interpret them and that helps us get over some kind of vague instructions or get past some slightly unclear things by taking the logical steps to get there, to fill in the blanks, as it were. Uh, computers don't have the ability to do this. They literally follow the instructions as they're told. Uh, so if you don't tell them exactly what you want, you're not going to get what you're expecting. So say, for example, you want to have your uh, your bots retreat when they get and when their shield gets low. In this programming language, you have to specify that you want the bot to flee from which enemy and at what stage uh, or percentage of their shield is at. Uh, and now here it's important to make sure that you include zero in this as well, because if you're in a situation where you just say low, one to 25% for example, and they run out of shield, they'll stop fleeing from the enemy and instead stop and do another action, probably turn around and start fighting again, which is not what you were necessarily expecting to happen. The second tip that I have is if you click on the bots, you can actually see what their current action is. And so if they're doing something unexpected, if you click on them, you can see why they are doing that. And then you can start problem solving from there or how to fix it or how to stop it from happening. The third tip I have for you is to make small changes to, and make sure it works between each change. So uh, don't go in, spend hours and hours on this massive new system uh, without testing each little part first, because if you test as you go, it's easier to find where you've gone wrong or what errors you have crept into the system. Um, whereas if you have this giant block of new stuff that you're testing, uh, trying to pinpoint what's going wrong becomes harder and harder the more there is to go through. And then finally, when you have a working AI uh, that you're happy with, uh, save it and make a copy of it. So that way, as you're working further on developing your AI, um, or your program even, being able to fall back onto that copy if you've done something accidentally that just breaks it entirely, you're not completely uh, out of all of the effort that you've put into this AI prior to that. So backup copies are definitely a great thing to have um, as you're working. So that's actually it for this video. So I just wanted to share this game with you because I think it's a great way to practice designing AI without actually having to build the game around it. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there and the community seems to be um, pretty good for other tutorials. If you want to do a deeper dive on some strategies or some things to implement and ways to implement them in the game. Um, I would definitely suggest checking some of that out. Let me know what you think. Uh, maybe we'll run into each other online. And take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you next time.